Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Kangwar and today we'll be studying quadratic lecture 2. So we'll be starting with vertex of parabola and especially the vertical parabola, not the horizontal one because we are talking about quadratic equations over here. So let's see that. How do we derive it? So this is essentially how a parabola looks like. Vertical parabola, basically a quadratic equation. This is how it looks like. And we know that this particular point, basically the lowest point or the highest point in this case, the highest point is this point this particular point is called as vortex okay now how to find the coordinate of this particular point basically x and y value for this one so let's see how it goes so the first thing to understand is we can calculate this particular point by two methods the first one is obviously application derivatives because this is a minima over here this is a maxima we have to uh, differentiate the equation and find out the value that is first method and we can do that easily because we have studied application of derivatives. Now, the second method would be to understand this parabolas, this, these vertical parabolas are symmetric. And if, if we see by symmetry, then this particular point is at the middle of both the roots. Now, we know that ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0. This is the general equation of a quadratic function or equation, right? Now, we know that sum of roots, let's say this is alpha and this is beta alpha plus beta would be minus b by a. So summation of both these roots is minus b by a. And we know that this particular point is at exactly center of both these roots. So that would be average value of alpha plus beta. So if we divide it by two, then we'll be getting minus b by two. A. So this is how you can also get the uh, x coordinate of the vortex, right? This is applicable for both this kind of parabola and this kind of parabola. So minus b by 2a you have to remember. Now if I try to put back this value in this equation, then what we'll be getting a times minus b by 2a whole square plus b times minus b by 2a plus c. So this becomes, this is 2a, this is 2a. This becomes a times b square by 4a square minus b square by 2a plus c. This gets cancelled. So clubbing both of them, we'll be getting minus b square by 4a plus c. So which eventually becomes minus times b square minus 4ac divided by 4a. So basically this is minus d by 4a. So you have to remember both of them. Minus b by 2a is vortex x coordinate and minus d by 4a is vortex y coordinate. So D is discriminant over here. Okay. Now let us talk about sign of quadratic expression. So until now we have studied about the nature of roots only. So basically until now we were concerned about a x square plus b x plus c equals to zero. So we were just talking about this particular case when this entire expression becomes zero, basically the roots. Now we are concerned with the value of this entire expression for different cases. So it can be either greater than zero. It can be less than zero. It can be equal to zero all these three cases will be considering. Okay. So let's look at first case. The first case is this one. So how do we define this particular, how do we, what kind of properties do we assign for this particular parabola? So if we have general equation like this, then we definitely know that a is greater than zero because this is facing upwards. And also since this is cutting at two points, B is also greater than zero. Now we cannot define one single value for this expression, for this expression, for this kind of parabola, because for some values like these values, these X values and these X values, this value is taking positive value in the parabola, right? And for certain values, which are inside the roots, it is taking negative value, right? So it is a mix of both. Sometimes it's taking positive value. Sometimes it's taking negative value. So we cannot define one single value for this particular kind of parabola. Now, similarly, second case is the exact opposite of this one, this one, right? So over here, A is less than zero and D is greater than zero. And again, we cannot define one single value, one single type of value for this particular kind of parabola because over here it's positive and over here it's negative. So it has both kind of values. Now let us talk about case number three. So this is our case number three. Now we know that this particular parabola is always positive, right? Because it's not cutting x-axis below x-axis. 
so it's always positive one thing for sure is since it's facing upwards a is greater than 0 and also since it's not cutting x axis so basically it doesn't it doesn't have any kind of real roots so d is less than 0 so for a condition to be parabola to be always positive a is greater than 0 and d is less than 0 these two conditions has to be satisfied and we can always in this case we can always say that ax square plus bx plus c is always greater than 0 right now third case is the exactly opposite that is this one sorry now over here you can see that this is always negative and also it's not having any kind of real roots so d is less than 0 and a is less than 0 so these are the two conditions for this kind of parabola it's always negative now the fifth case is the obvious one so it's just touching touching at just one single point so d equals to 0 a is greater than 0 so in this case we can say that ax square plus bx plus c is greater than or equals to 0 right because it's always positive or equals to 0 at just one single point now the opposite case would be here a is less than 0 and d is equals to 0 so in this case ax square plus bx plus c is always less than or equals to 0 because it's zero at just one single point and for every other every other point it's less than zero okay now let's look at this question for all x x square plus 2 a x plus 10 minus 3 a is greater than zero then the interval in which a lies is so basically this is the kind of uh, quadratic function we are talking about which is always greater than zero so basically a is greater than zero d is less than zero so these are the two conditions which has to be satisfied. Now we know that A is always already uh, greater than zero over here because it's one, so which is positive. So we don't have to apply that kind of condition. So the only condition we have to apply is D is less than zero. So over here, that would be four A square minus four times 10 minus three A is less than zero. So four gets canceled out. A square minus 10 minus pl plus three A is less than zero. So this becomes A plus five and a minus 2 less than 0 so this would give me a belongs to minus minus 5 to 2 so b option is correct now let's look at one more example find all the values of a for which the inequality a minus 4 x square minus 2 a x plus 2 a minus 6 is less than 0 so we have this kind of case in this one over here we say that the coefficient of x square is less than 0 and d is also less than 0. So these are two conditions which have to be satisfied. So the coefficient of x square is a minus 4. So a minus 4 is less than 0. And that means a is less than 4. And similarly, if we try to do the discriminant less than 0, sorry, no, yeah, less than 0, we'll be getting 4a square minus 4 times a minus 4, 2a minus 6 less than 0. So this would give me 4a square. This gets 4 gets cancelled out. a square minus this would give me 2a square minus 6a minus 8a and plus 24 less than 0. So this we this will be becoming a square minus 2a square. This becomes 14 and plus 14a and minus 24 less than 0. So this is becoming a square minus a square. Let's take minus as common a square minus 14 a plus 24 greater than 0. So this would become a minus 12 and a minus 2 greater than 0. So that eventually becomes a belongs to minus infinity to 2 union 12 to infinity. And the other equation we got in inequality we've got is a is less than 4. So let's try to plot this on number line. So this is our 4, this is our 12, not, not over here, sorry, this is our 4, this is 2 and let's say this is 12. So we are, we are going from uh, 12 to infinity, we are also going from minus infinity to 2 and we are also going from here to minus infinity to 4. So the common values are these only. So the final range would be minus infinity to 2. Okay. 
let's talk about location of roots and this is one of the most toughest topic of quality equations so we'll be taking it little slowly and we won't be you know trying to uh, remember all the conditions of every single case so let's try to see the case one so the case one is both of the both roots are actually greater than x1 so how does it look like let's say this is x1 this would look like this one and let's say this is x1 and this would look like this one both of these conditions satisfy both roots are greater than x1 both of these graphs actually satisfy this condition right now the first condition should be obvious that d is greater than equals to 0 either it can basically it has to be real roots only either they can be equal roots or they can be both distinct roots but if they are not real then we cannot even compare with x1 right so d greater than equals to 0 right that is the first condition now in case of second condition what many people might think that okay if this is alpha this is beta this is alpha this is beta if i try to make alpha greater than x1 then our work is done because if alpha is greater than x1 then in that case beta would also be greater than x1 that should be the ideal condition that seems to be true and that is actually true but the problem over here is in many conditions or in many questions you will be given uh, roots in terms of variables you will not be able to judge if alpha is bigger or beta is bigger you will not be able to judge but compare between the two roots because they are, they'll be given in the variables so the uh, better way to do that is let me just remove this yes so the better way to do this is comparing vortex as compared to x1 and also adding one more condition that is f of x1 multiplied by uh, sorry f of x1 would take a positive value in this case and f of x1 would take a negative value in the parabola in this case right so these conditions have to be met in order to satisfy that one single uh, thing that both the roots are greater than x1 right so let me summarize it once again why are we not doing just this single root greater than x1 and that would make the bigger root uh, obviously greater than x1 because in in case of questions you will be getting uh, roots in terms of variables and you you won't be able to judge which which root is bigger so ultimately you'll have to do this is also bigger than this one and this is also bigger than this one and that would be that would mean the actual same amount of work but what we can do to find a better condition is first we'll be doing vortex is greater than x1 and that is basically minus b by 2a is greater than x1 that is the first condition and the second condition would be x1 uh, will take a positive value over here and x1 will take a negative value over here and how to find a common condition between do, these two basically a dot f of x1 would take a positive value over here a is less than 0 and this value is also less than 0 so a dot f x1 would be positive over here and similarly over here a is greater than 0 and f of a dot f of x1 would take a positive value over here right so the second condition would be a dot f of x1 is greater than 0 so the second and third condition would be minus b by 2a is greater than x1 and a dot f of x1 is greater than is greater than 0 right so this seems to be a little tricky over here but this is how you have to build your intuition now the case 2 is i'll leave that to you guys both roots are smaller than x1 that is exactly a similar case exactly the opposite case as the first one so both roots are smaller than x1 then this is x1 and this is the condition and uh, this is x1 and this is the condition so basically just to give an idea this is vortex let's say this is v0 so v0 is less than x1 in both the cases and similarly uh, over here if i take the value of x1 f of x1 over here then that would be positive this is a greater than 0 so f of x1 dot a should be greater than 0 similarly for this case as well and also d greater than equals to 0 right these three conditions just to give you a rough idea now the case 3 is one root greater than x1 and other is smaller than x1 so how does it look so this is our parabola one root is greater than x1 and other root is smaller than x1 so basically the value of uh, x1 is somewhere over here this is x1 and similarly the other case would be the value of x1 is somewhere over here now this is the easiest case actually uh, in this case you might think that okay we'll have to do d greater than equal to zero first because obviously it will have two roots but what if i just do i know that a is greater than zero over here a is less than zero over here 
what if i just do a dot f of x1 and that should be you know less less than 0 why less than 0 because f of x1 would be negative value over here f of x1 would be positive value over here if i multiply f of x1 into a that would be negative over here as well if i multiply f of x1 into a that would be negative if i just do that that would automatically include d greater than equals to 0 why because this would be negative only when this is cut this is cutting this x x axis right this would be negative only when this is cutting x axis otherwise it won't be negative if it's some hanging somewhere over here it would be positive right and if it's just touching over here in that case it would be zero but it would be negative only when this is cutting uh, cutting the x axis at two distinct points so that automatically includes assumes the condition that this entire parabola has two roots okay so this particular case has just one single condition that is a dot fx1 is less than 0 now let us talk about case 4 both roots between x1 and x2 so what does this mean so we have x1 over here and this is x2 over here and we have both roots x1 and x2 over here similarly the other case would be this is x1 and this is x2 and this is the toughest of the uh, case so this is basically this is the toughest case uh, and this will clarify all your concepts and this will build the best intuition for these kind of questions so what should be the first condition so the first condition would would be obviously d greater than equals to 0 because uh, x1 is not inside x2 is not inside if that was inside then we would have skipped this particular condition but we cannot skip this because these are outside for example if this is the case then all then also f of x1 and f of x2 would be positive in this case also f of x1 and f of x2 would be positive so we cannot really make sure with the help of other conditions that this is also uh, being satisfied so this has to be a mandatory condition d is greater than equals to 0 over here so that is the first point now what should be the second obvious condition that would be this vertex uh, this vertex this vertex is less than x2 and vertex is greater than x1 that should be the second condition right in both the cases this is true but that can also mean this kind of situation so this is x1 this is x2 and this is vertex and for this kind of condition this is also true so we will have to introduce few more conditions so what can be that condition that condition would be this is a greater than 0 this is a less than 0 so a dot f of x1 should be greater than 0 and also a dot f of x2 should be greater than 0 so basically we are trying to take the value of f of x1 over here and multiplying with a that should be greater than 0 and also f of x2 dot a should be greater than 0 why because if i am taking this condition this is x1 this is x2 this is x1 this is x2 and this is vertex in that case this would be negative right but in this case only this would be positive so that would cover both the situation both both the situations so the third and fourth condition would be this please so these are the four conditions satisfying this kind of situation now let's look at uh, fifth case exactly one root between x1 and x2 so this one is x1 this one is x2 and we have exactly one root so it can take either this value or it can take this value both ways it can happen similarly over here it can like it can happen like this one this one is x1 and this one is x2 and either ways so both both ways are possible now again over here uh, we'll be having just one condition that would be f of x1 dot f of x2 should be less than 0 and that will satisfy in every single case in this case this is positive and this is negative over here this is positive and uh, sorry this is negative and this is positive and uh, that would satisfy this condition f of x1 dot f of x2 is less than 0 in every single case it will satisfy and you again you will not have to use that condition d is greater than equal to 0 because that is already included over there so let's say if d is less than 0 in that case we can see that Uh, f of x1 dot f of x2 would become positive for for few of the cases. So if we are doing f of x1 dot f of x2 less than zero, that would automatically consider d is greater than equals to zero. You will you will not have to do this. Okay. 
so this is the only condition for this particular case now the case 6 is both roots are outside x1 x2 i'll leave that for the homework now let us look at this question the values of a for which the equation 2x square minus 2 times 2a plus 1x plus a times a minus 1 is equals to 0 has the roots alpha and beta between satisfying the condition this so basically this condition is nothing is this particular condition this is alpha this is beta and this is some a over here it's not exactly in center it can be somewhere between alpha and beta okay now the interesting thing is coefficient of x square is positive over here so this is the only condition which you have to satisfy now in this case uh, as we uh, you know studied in the third case i guess in that case what we did a dot f of a f of x1 is less than zero and that was the only condition which we had to satisfy right because it's it between over there and if this value is negative over here that automatically implies that this has two roots so we don't really have to do d greater than equals to zero so over here since a is already positive basically coefficient of x square is already positive so the only condition which we have to satisfy is 2 dot f of a x1 over here is a so 2 dot f of a is less than zero so basically f of a is less than zero so let's try to plug it plug this value over here so this would give me 2a square minus 2 times 2a plus 1 a plus a square minus a is less than zero so that would be 2a square minus 4a square minus 2a plus a square minus a less than zero so this eventually becomes minus a square minus 3a less than zero so a times uh, a plus 3 greater than zero so a belongs to minus infinity to uh, zero sorry minus 3 union 0 to infinity now if you want to check it you can just try checking d greater than equals to 0 or d greater than 0 then you will also find that uh, uh, this this particular condition would give a range that is a superset of this one so ultimately we have to take the intersection of both the conditions so that would give the answer as this well as this this only so this if you are just doing this particular step as well then it's going to be redundant and you can just verify it by checking this condition and you'll find that uh, the answer would come out to be a superset of this particular uh, range okay so today's lecture was still here only and tomorrow we'll be having the last lecture of quadratic and that would cover the concepts of common roots and few other basic concepts and uh, in this particular lecture location of roots is the most important topic and that's the most difficult to understand try to practice as many as questions possible in this particular topic and that should be it so let's meet tomorrow thanks for watching